you know, one of the most polarizing topics when it comes to pro CRTs, especially like Sony PVMs and BVMs, has to be the topic of price, uh, and especially how much, you know, we've covered with my channel, how much money it costs now to, in 2020, practically, to get a pro video monitor. And so I thought that maybe I'd do a follow-up video to those videos and show you kind of what the prices were originally on these Sony PVMs and BVMs back when they were new. I was combing through some old files and I managed to find some pretty interesting uh, statistics. And I'll just show you basically what I had originally. Now this was sent to me maybe three years ago from somebody, uh, basically it was just showing a, a link that they had found and saved some screenshots of pricing figures from 2003. This was like March and April of 2003, specifically from a Sony dealer that was selling PVMs and BVMs. And I mean, there was all kinds of data in here. They had a list of everything that was still available at this point that they could get and what the list price was. So I want to show you some of these list prices because it's quite interesting, I think, uh, to know what these monitors originally cost back in the day. So again, this has been about the 2003 point. And here's the prices on uh, these monitors. Now, these would have still been being made back by this point, 2002 and 2003. So first, we've got these medical analog only monitors. Uh, we've got the M series and the L series. Now, this isn't the M4U. I didn't have pricing for that, but I did have pricing for the M2s and the L2s. And they were pretty much the same price right on at the uh, list price level. And that was $1,360 for a 14 inch monitor. And then if you went up to the 20 inch monitor, you were going to pay right at about double that 2725 for a 20 inch uh, PVM. Now, I could have imagined back in the day, maybe somebody with a lot of money might have gotten a 14 inch monitor for some kind of use, maybe home use outside of uh, what they would have used it for in the medical arena at that time, if they had any idea what to use these monitors for. But anyway, that's kind of what the going price. So these prices uh, were right at the end of that life cycle for the CRT, especially that one. And then, of course, we have the L5 series, which is the first multi-format series here. This does do up to 1080i and all the way down to 240p. Uh, very great monitor. So this list price was $3,551. So in 2020, a very good newer condition, one of these is going to cost you well over uh, $1,500, more like $2,000 probably at this point for a you know brand new style, almost condition one. And then there are some upgrades that you need to make to those two, which I will be discussing in a further follow-up video this year. And the 14L5, that one was right over $2,000, $2,025. So uh, if you look at it, well, I'll show you how much BVMs are, and you can understand that this was actually more of a value than those BVMs would have been back in the day. So first, let's talk about the big one that everybody's always looking for. That's the BVM D series, uh, specifically those widescreen series. So, I mean, just hold on to your chin straps here and 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 check out this the 32 inch widescreen monitor back in 2003 when it was top of the line for production equipment was listed at almost forty thousand dollars at thirty nine thousand and fifty five dollars and that probably did not include a video input card that was probably for the monitor itself because I did get some accessory pricing included with my quotes that I had given to me. So that one, $39,000. And then the 24, it wasn't, I mean, it was cheaper, sure, but at 24,000, almost 25,000. So even though those prices, those monitors are starting to push upwards of over $3,000 for a good condition one, we're still um, way lower than what these originally cost. I mean, even a D20 was 13000 And then if I get down here, the unbelievable thing to me is that the 9 and the 14-inch was were so expensive. The 9 was 5200 almost, and the 14 was 6000 almost. Now, I will tell you those two at the bottom, those did could include the controls and the setups and everything. So... You, um, you could use those as a master monitor, but they would have been a lot smaller in the screen. But again, 
that's the actual listing price for these when this was a new monitor back in 2003. So the A series, now I didn't have any included pricing in the A series, and that might have been simply because it was so new that um, maybe they left some of that out in their quotes or they didn't have that ready. But I did come across this monitor accessory page that gave us quotes for the input cards and accessories uh, new on, on some of this uh, equipment and, and especially the input video cards, for example, the A series. So the funny thing on this one is, is you can see how much the cheapest card listed on this whole page is the 68X, which is the analog RGB and component card. And that one today is well over that. It's, it's the most expensive input accessory card on the market. Uh, you know, they sell, I don't, I don't know how much they actually will sell for, but never again will we see one for $700 or less, most likely. They've actually flipped to where they're more expensive on the lines of these two or, uh, other ones. And this BKM 62 HS has fallen to where it's only a $50 card plus shipping, I mean, with shipping. So you can find that one extremely cheap. There were tons of the S SDI and HD SDI cards made. So uh, that one is still really cheap. But again, that 68X, there's a very low production number on that. Um, I believe it's less than 300 possibly are in existence even anymore, but I'm not 100% sure on that. That's just what I've uh, gathered from other data. Now, something like the uh, Auto Probe, the L14L, looking at still $850. And then this is interesting, the 15R, which is the enclosure for the unit, actually uh, is about $1,000. So, you know, something like that would have, you know, they're easily going to spend over $30,000 probably for a fully set up D series monitor that was like a 24 inch. And then if you jumped up to that 32 inch, you would have been spending woof, well over 40, almost $50,000 on the monitor plus accessories most likely. So that's pretty much it. I, I, th I just thought these, this information was uh, very interesting to take a look at and see what the prices really were compared to back in the day. As today, you know, we know what we're dealing with with pricing where it just keeps going up. Well, it's still not the highest that it ever was because it still was pretty expensive new back in the day. I, I appreciate you watching this quick video with me. Have a great week and I'll see you next time with some more retro content.